And right now we have Sunshine with Ed Rosenthal. So take All it away. All right. Well, this this is Sunshine, and I am here with the KMUD live stream of the 12th annual Emerald Cup in Santa Rosa at the Sonoma Fairgrounds. And I have with, with me Red, I'm sorry, I have with me Ed Rosenthal. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. How's How's this uh, weekend starting out for you here at the Emerald Cup? Well, it's very hectic here. Marijuana seems to be pretty popular. It is. The hype is amazing. There's so much. Even just the expansion of the 215 area, it's starting to show just um, the how big this industry is getting. I didn't realize how many sick people there are in California, but marijuana seems to be able to help them. It, it sure does, and it's also going to just change change people's lives. Yes. Do you have any? You've also written some books that have definitely helped this industry grow. Are, do you have any other any new projects coming out? I have two new books on the way. Uh, there's a a, a uh, survey of the. Uh, four books of buds that I'm putting out, and uh, it's uh, reviewing the very best of those buds, and then I have a book on how to harvest. And I think that that will basically change the way people people process uh, their their produce. What are some of the things that people are doing now that you would like to see changed? Briefly, I think they should throw their jars away and uh, just get rid of them. Because they're not sell them, sell them to uh, naive people. Because they're not breathing properly. Well, because there's no need to use jars. It's it's a waste of time. It's like putting a. It's first of all, it hurts the buds. That's the very first thing, because it creates a an environment in the jar that's conducive to mold, bacteria, and so on. Secondly, it's tedious. Third, people, when people put it in the jars, then they move the stuff around in the jars, and the fir- no, first thing that you know is that you shouldn't be handling bud. So all of those things make it absolutely wrong to put it in a jar. And uh, So what are the alternatives? Not putting it in a jar. Putting it into, but what other things? What do you have to put it in? What What do you have to put it in anything? If you've dried it, why not just cure it in the same room that you dried it in? Cure it you in know, the same You know, what oh. you putting it in a jar is like, you know, when they first had uh, uh, cake mixes, w- uh, housewives didn't like to use them because they felt guilty because they weren't baking. So somebody said, well, Make it so that they put an egg in the cake mix, and then people, then the w- housewives felt that they were participating in sort of baking the cake. So this is sort of the same thing. People think that well, if if pot does perfectly well on its own, well, with my intervention, it will do better, and you know that's not tr- so. Because take a look at the people who take take the plant, they harvest it. They hang it upside down. They let it totally dry. That is dry and cure. (coughs) Then they manicure it. Then they put it in a bag and sell it. They've cured it, dried it and cured it in a better way than the people who have been playing around putting it in, in bags or whatever. So you mean it's maybe like better before you were to bag it, to leave it maybe even for like several weeks, even a couple of months, just in your drying room in the open? That could be, that could be one way, yeah, but leave it open so that it can breathe. Mm-hmm. You, don't want, you don't want it to be in any, even for a few minutes, you don't want it to be in an atmosphere that has a really high humidity, and that's what the jars have. Mm-hmm. That's why this, that when they say sweating, that's water that's, excuse me, dried from the leaf uh, or from the bud and then condensed on the outside. And you just don't want a high humidity like that. 
Right, right, and then also everybody uh, knows that, but they, they, you know, they fail to, to look at the situation because they've been tied to this ritual. R part of it is ritual and myth that they feel that they have to march around the city seven times and the walls will fall, or that they have to do something or else it won't be right. That they have to intervene. Well, yeah, I mean, and one thing, too, yeah, you have to, there's a lot of intervening. I mean, opening up those bags and opening up all those jars to off-gas them on a regular basis is like and a then lot of you work. And then what do you do when you open up that bag? You mix it around, right? But everybody knows that pot is best if you leave it, if you don't handle it a lot. And there you are tossing it, putting it in the washing machine, so to speak. For sure. I so you don't need to do that. You want to dry it. Like in, a, in a room with the proper humidity. So that's what one of, okay. that's just one of the things that the book, new book is going to have in it. What's the proper humidity? You'll have to buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just put your buds in a box and label it and leave it on a shelf, kind of open. 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 Yeah, open, and you don't mix it and you don't touch it. But you don't you don't put a thick layer either. Right. And you know in the in the Bay Area and Humboldt, it, you know, room temperature is fine. Are you going to lose some of your terpenes? And terpenes are lost when uh, with high heat. So you keep the temperature low, seventy. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Room temperature. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I, I have been. I did notice the handling at harvest does need to change. And I think it will be one of the things that it, yeah, I see that also in the very near future um, becoming more important in terms of making a quality product because um, things are getting handled too much and you can see it as well. I, I agree with that. We want to minimize that. So do you have a preference for dry trim or wet trimming? No, no, I don't. But either way, you just have to be uh, respectful of that bud. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I'm seeing it for sure. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what do your have you? What do you think about just the quality of? Have you seen any flowers since you've gotten here? And what do you think about what you've seen so far? I ha I haven't. I've been out there telling people my uh, pre-rolls. That's the main thing. <laughs> what's there, is there any, uh, like, just, what's like the latest strain that just, that's on your mind that you just recently smelled or tasted, you're like, wow, that was good, kind of sticking with you? Well, uh. well, actually, n um, I, I'm looking backwards because I want to take you to back to a different time that some people might remember. Have you ever opened up a bag of a bag, plastic bag, and it, the whole room stinks? And you close the bag, you open the door, the windows, and the room still stinks, and you haven't even smoked it. Have you ever had something like that? Have you ever experienced it? People here are saying they have. But it's pretty rare, right? And I believe that that experience happened more in, with some of the early varieties. And I'm, so I'm sort of looking backwards in terms of I think that those are the varieties with more terpenes. And that as people have bred for, for THC, they've sort of lost a yeah. lot of the terpenes. So I'm, so in a way, I'm looking back. Now that you're saying that, it's true. Because even a couple of years ago, I was looking at my different strains. It's like a portfolio, so to speak. And I was like, well, where is that one where you just open the bag and the smell just pops out and like it's just really big and like really fills the whole room? And I was like, OK, I need something like that. I'm missing it. And, and then I started thinking, like you're saying, like, whoa, this is, you yeah, you know, it used to be You know, in the like last that. six years, to be really honest about it, in the last six years, I've experienced it twice. Once w I was in a conference in Toronto, and this kid 
young kid from Montreal came and we smoked this joint and oh, you know, you could smell that joint and you know, it sort of was like really heady. And I don't usually say this to a person, but I said, can I get another joint to that? I mean, that's that, not something that I usually do. But he, but that was so that was so good. And then uh, th before that, there was this fellow who had a pound of it. Maybe th three years before that, it's very rare now. But it wasn't rare at another time. So I'm searching for some of those early. You know, I, I, I mean, I have some. I'm, I'm planning to grow out some of that. Mm -hmm. what, what might be that material and find would you that. would you think that the the train wreck has some of that in happening i I just haven't had anything with that in with the, the intensity that those things have had not no, hmm. nothing like it mm -hmm. did you get to check out any garden do any garden tours this past fall not this fall oh wow it was a really good year uh, for the emerald triangle no, i i i understand i i was in uh, doing other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Are, are you teaching at all or giving workshops? Once in a while. I give a class once in a while at Oaksterdam. But um, I'm not doing, I'm doing a lot of um, private consulting and also uh, research and development. Research and development. Of, of, of uh, cultivation methods, new cultivation methods, uh, new concepts in, in cultivation, things hmm. like that. Nice. That's yeah. cool. I'm looking forward to hearing more yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, there's. It's right. Right now, I. I hesitate to talk about it because. Uh, uh, everything's still in development, developmental stages. One thing that I am doing is. Uh, I've, uh, I'm setting up a terpene research company, which, like most people, are researching how uh, how to pull terpenes out of uh, marijuana one way or another. And I'm interested more in the effects of the individual terpenes mm -hmm. and the the and of the spectrum of terpenes when used together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that is going to be a long, and <laughs> I'll just, yeah, there's, I, I would imagine it's kind of has the complexity of wine at that point where you developing a sense of, of flavor and even having, flavor can be hard to remember too. Well, terpenes aren't flavor, that would be flavonoids. Mm -hmm. Terpenes are all odor, right. odor related rather than flavor. Right, but keeping track of like those odors, how they and and the types of high, being able to <laughs> remember and keep track of that will well be good. Well, um, you have to develop a so in order to to do it in a way that be w that becomes understandable and has any kind of consistency to it. You have to develop a protocol, and then from that protocol, you can do specific experiments, which would give you indications. And there are also MRIs and other mm. uh, brain scans, so that when, for instance, you could give a person a brain scan and have them smell a, or come in contact with a particular odor while they have the brain scan, and you see what lights up. Wow, that's pretty fascinating, actually. Yeah. Hmm, I'll be curious to learn more about that and yeah. pay more attention. Mm -hmm. Just, it's just there's so many terpenes in a in cannabis, and we're only really testing for a few of those. And so, I mean, picking one out and then and then understanding its effect, but then there's the entourage, and you have all those different terpenes yeah. together. Well, the the are perhaps 30 that are regularly found mm -hmm. to any degree. And some some of the terpenes that are found there, it's they're at, at such slight levels that um, it's just that their presence is, 
is indicated, but it, uh, but I'm looking at I'm looking at the ones that are mainly involved in um, that 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 mo that are found mo that are most commonly found in in the uh, in campus. Nice, yeah. yeah. Huh. That's cool. I'm looking forward to f hearing more and learning more and seeing our, do you have any, are you planning on traveling at all in the near future and m taking this to the, just taking it also at the international level? That, um, well, uh, uh, I'm working for, um, uh, I'm doing that within a corporate structure uh, which is when I say within a corporate structure, I mean um, uh, with a, a small company. But um, I'm working for this company that's doing that hmm. that I'm involved with. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm looking. So, are you also? I mean, what are you in terms of just? You're here at the Emerald Cup. It's growing from what it was last year and there's a lot of hype and have what have you seen since you've been here just kind of what are your thoughts about where we are right now with 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 cannabis my thoughts about cannabis well you know i started experimenting with cannabis a few decades ago but at when at the end of the first 10 years I uh, evaluated and I still wasn't sure about it. And um, so I continued the experiment and I'm still not sure, I'm still, you know, I, I, I don't have a final assessment. So we'll just have to wait to see when, I don't, I'm not sure when the experiment will end, but I'll let you know. Nice, nice, well it's been so Because I'm, not, I'm just not sure, I just, <laughs> you know, I'm still experimenting. I love that. I love that. I'm always going to experiment to you. Yeah. I don't think I could not experiment at this point. Yeah, it's it's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And For now sure. it's a longitudinal experiment, so I'll probably write it up after I die. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you for coming yeah. here yeah. and My being pleasure. the came on live stream. Yeah. Well, have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye.